Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I've got a great guest today, Roslyn Warren, and she's an energy alignment strategist, which is really interesting. We're going to talk about barriers, self-sabotage, procrastination, wealth, and I'm really excited to have her to the show. So Roslyn, welcome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the invitation and welcome to everyone. Yeah. Tell people your story, how you got started, the work you do, and we'll get right into it. (laughs) All right. Well, I'm Rosalind Warren, and I work over at sacredlifemastery.art, and it's about being aligned with your whole self, your divine parts, and your physical parts, and bringing all of those together, and how being in alignment in this way allows you to have greater and greater and greater success because what the work I do, uh, I work as an intuitive wealth and alignment coach is to undo all the conditioning that has, you've just brought along with you (laughs) and we go, Oh, from my parents. Well, yes. And their parents and their parents and their parents and their parents. And as I was thinking about the conversation that we would have together, knowing what you're all trying to create, one of the biggest pieces that I find with high achievers, which you all are, who are striving for more, which you all are, so congratulations, but we run into some secret hidden barriers that we aren't even aware of. And when you hear about them, you'll go, oh, that's not true about me. Okay, but just allow the idea to flow (laughs) into your mind. So my biggest barrier for people who are high achievers, who is who I love to work with the most, is we are set up as humans with this energy system. And down at the very bottom base of that is your first chakra. Many of you may have heard about the chakra systems. But your deepest psychological level that is embedded into your nervous system is safety. And it's your tribe. And it's this inborn feeling or knowing because even as an infant it's true if if your parents put you outside as an infant you would die if you got pushed out of the tribe for any reason you would even today die now we got things going and rocking and rolling here. So I don't know, probably by the time you get about six years old, if your tribe threw you out, you would make it. You might not be happy and you'll carry scars, but you're not going to get eaten by a mammoth. But that ingrained part of, I have to follow the tribal rules is ingrained in each and every one of us. And so what that sets up is as you are going to the level you are at, that is your wealth set point. That's how much, now feel into this, that's how much money you're allowed to have. And now you have teamed up with Dr. Chris and you're like, yeah, I won't have twice that much. And something inside of you starts going, wait, back up back up, back up. Who do you think you are? People like us don't have that kind of wealth. People like us don't. And it sets up this whole thing within you. And then you're doing crazy things. Like you you want to go do this and make that deal, but you find yourself over here in some kind of turmoil. Or you know, I really, really want to go talk to that guy, but mm, I'm just going to go play golf. So we start then doing these procrastinating processes that are just built into all of this. So does that make any sense to you, Dr. Chris? Yeah, I know um, it makes sense to me and I'm glad the audience out there is um, also listening. So, um, so here's one question is um, Mm -hmm. this talk about, you talk about 
um, goal trauma. What is what is goal trauma? Yeah, goal trauma. It's it is an actual neurological trauma. And when we talk about this kind of trauma, of course, we're not talking about the capital T trauma. So not like the car wreck or those kinds of things, but it's still a small T trauma that infects and, and affects your entire life. And it was at a time. So just think about as I'm saying the words, allow whatever flows up into your mind to come. There was a time that you wanted something. And you set a goal to have it. And you just went at it with your whole heart. You were all in. There may have even been people that told you you were nuts and you just ignored them. Or there were people that went, you know, if you tried it this other way, it might go, it, no, no, I know what I'm doing. And you went it to town and you just threw your whole heart into it. And then inexplicably, it failed. It just didn't work and it broke your heart. So most people have something that immediately comes to mind. Dr. Chris, do you have one? I mean, we all have them. It's uh, mm -hmm. what I wanted to ask you is, uh, is the, um, how does gold trauma affect your prosperity? It's basically mm -hmm. rejection. You know, it's like if you, you know, you had your, sights set on something and you know you put everything into it and you failed mm -hmm. and you basically it's you traumatize you know all that blood sweat and tears mm -hmm. somebody screwed you over uh, somebody uh, did you wrong somebody backstabbed you um you know what uh, what, uh, what other thing uh, somebody sabotaged you you know all these stories so how does it affect your prosperity yeah so what happens to it it gets locked into your nervous system Oh, so then when you are setting that new goal and you want to go forward and, and have another big goal, your nervous system literally goes, yeah, we're not doing that. Now, how, of course, we don't hear that word or we go, hush, be quiet. <laughs> so the way it plays out is with all of these mysterious behaviors and mysterious behaviors, I, those are my definitions for things that you do that afterwards you say, why did I do that? And again, it can look like procrastination, resistance, just wandering off doing other things. For some of us, it looks like jumping from project to project to project and never really completing anything, leaving things hanging. You, you're not moving forward. Now, what we tend to do is we then come back on ourselves and go, well, if I wasn't lazy, I could so-and-so. If I wasn't, we blame ourselves or we blame other people. Well, if they would, if, if the wife and kids would leave me alone, I could do all these great things. <laughs> but what we need to understand is it's really actually our nervous system protecting us from the possibility of having our heart broken again. So it's like, well, okay, what are we going to do about it? Now, first thing is to have the awareness that that's even going on so that we can go, oh, wait, there's, I'm, I'm doing that thing I do again. I wonder what I could do differently. How could I shift it? But what I found is, all of these mysterious behaviors, although you're a doctor, you get this uh, idea behind it. And how many books are out there about procrastination? How many books are out there about how to set your time and plan everything so you have plenty of time to do what you want? If those were the real issues, we'd have solved them long ago. But I have found they are simply the Band-Aid for the broken arm. And the broken arm is the goal trauma that is locked into your physical nervous system. So you can't talk yourself out of it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I thought you were going to be, um, so you can't talk your, so the next question is, um, so when you can't talk yourself into it, so, and um, I've been reading a lot of books on, you know, how people store trauma, the body knows a score. That's mm -hmm. a great book. And uh, I've been actually watching, there's uh, some really great YouTube channels where they talk about 
the power of yoga. And basically what's mm -hmm. interesting is the way they describe it is like you hold these poses and stretches for particular moments in time. And it basically mm -hmm. retrains your nervous system to stretch and release. And um, mm -hmm. so how do you, how do you get rid of the, the trauma in your body? How do you like, how do you identify it? How do you, what's the work that goes into releasing that? Yeah. The, the process that I use uh, is the, I call it transformational tapping. You may have heard of EFT. So it's the tapping, which is you know, stimulating the meridian points. So we don't use needles. Yay. <laughs> but that calms your nervous system down because all of this is fight, flight, freeze. It's all the, the stress syndrome behavior. So you set a big goal, your body goes into freeze, flight, or flight, fight or flight. And so it's that yoga is an, is an awesome energy tool to use. And so the process that I use is using hypnosis and the tapping at the same time. So we calm the nervous system down and then we clear through the hypnotic process. We clear the trauma itself. And from there, your nervous system is no longer fighting you like it was. Now, you're going to have some habits that are built in. You know, you have the habit of when something I'm going to go, yeah, I want to go wander around. So then we start just, and that's where coaches come in. We cl help clear up the, uh, you know, the wandering around and the bad habits and things. But for me, that's the process of clearing this energy. Meditation is beautiful. Really, it's anything. It's funny. I was going to say non-medicinal, meaning without substances. So we're not talking about using substance to calm your nervous system down because that can add a whole nother layer. But it's it's anything that you can do to calm down. Yeah, I love that. And the um, I love the other question is um, when you talk about how to cal calm the nervous system down mm -hmm. when. So like, for example, all of these modalities and techniques, like the trauma is there, but how do you identify it? And, you know, people say meditation, but how do you know you're, you're are, um, cleared or you're healed? How do you, do, how do you know? You start doing your stuff. You will be able to do the things you want to do. You will be procrastinating less. Okay. How do you know your broken arm is healed? it's strong and quits hurting again. So you're no longer having to band-aid this painful arm because you healed the break. Yeah, so Are you there? All, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling in the words. You feel it. You feel calmer. You feel more certain. You feel confident. And the thing the things that used to just grate your nerves, you're able to respond to them instead of reacting to them. You're not like a bull in a china shop anymore. And you're able to just calm down. And from there, that's the other thing. From there, you can make wise choices. Yeah. The other question is, uh, so what you talk about this idea of what is law of attraction 5.0 and why doesn't law of attraction work for everyone? Surrender. <laughs> I was just talking to somebody the other day. This all, and they're like, I've heard surrender four times this week. I think, like, yes, yeah, it's the time for surrender. Law of attraction. I love law of attraction. Um, it understanding it changed my life. And a lot of people have only been introduced to law of attraction through like the secret. And I adore the secret. And that is also nursery school level law of attraction. And, you know, the universe is so gracious. When you first get started with law of attraction, I mean, I want a parking space over here. And there it is. I mean, things just being all the time. And then it's time to add more layers to it. So you have to know that one and one makes two. So that's why we start at this basic, basic level. 
But as you go along, you get to a place where, okay, it has a little bit to do with, am I asking for things that I really, really, really want? Or am I going after things I should? Am I still doing what I'm doing to please other people in my life? And now we're back to, you know, to make my parents proud. Am I doing this, this goal I have is what's, is it to prove something to somebody? And when, when you are setting a goal or a vision for something that is not really what your soul wants, it's going to be incredibly difficult. And so that's, that's the, the, the nuances of it. And then there are, there's two ways that it will stop any and every manifestation. One of them is attachment. And attachment is when you have a goal, you're going to create whatever it is you're going to create. And you have this feeling that if you do not create it, your life is going to be diminished in some way. If I don't make that $10,000, it's not going to be worth living. That's the energy we have behind it. And you see, we can feel that kind of grasping, holding energy. The other one that most of us don't think about, but that's just as detrimental is um, aversion. And that's the idea of if I reach that goal, that's going to mean, and now you have this whole litany of things that are going to happen. I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to you know, take the kids out of school and we're going to have to do all that. And you, all the things we make up. Now, here's the piece I want you to feel into. Both aversion and attachment are driven by the goal trauma. Because as long as you're attached to something, you cannot surrender and allow it to come to you. As long as you are pushing something away, because somewhere in your mind, and you may not even be uh, cognizant of exactly what it is, you think your life is going to be worse off if you get it. You're pushing it away. Both of those are perfectly fine with your ego and your nervous system because you're not going to change. And that's their only job is to keep you safe. And it's driven by that goal trauma because if you don't change, you're safe. That's the, that's the opinion of your ego and your personality and your nervous system. No change means things are good. Now, you and I both sit here and go, yeah, well, where I'm at is not where I want to end up. I need change. I want stuff to be better. But inside, that hurt part of you is going, now, nah, give that up. So Law of Attraction 5.0 and how to make it work for you is to understand what it really takes to surrender to the goal that you have for yourself that is really yours. And then noticing when roadblocks come up, when things, you know, working through all of this attachment and then the other, and then surrendering completely to the process so that it can come in. Yeah, really interesting. Um, how can people contact you, follow you, reach out to you, et cetera? Yeah, thank you. So what I have is because I'm so hip on goal trauma, <laughs> and it's a little nebulous. It's a term we don't hear all the time. I've actually created something called the Freedom Formula Assessment. And you can pick that up at my website. I'll give you that link in just a moment. And I know we'll have it below. It's a 10 minute assessment to determine whether or not goal trauma is actually what's playing out in your life. It's like, oh, 10 minutes to find out if I have a broken arm. Yes. <laughs> and it won't be painful. And you don't need a cast. So you can pick that up at forward slash assessment. Yeah. And uh, let's thank for all the audience. Let's thank Roz for coming on. Um, interesting. 
be sure to check out her social media. All of her links will be in the show notes. And uh, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. It was wonderful being with you all. <laughs>